This offseason has been quite the roller coaster for us Mariners fans, really a tale of two halves. But now, getting into spring training, there's reason to be optimistic about, well, every part of the lineup. The pitching staff as a whole is a force to be reckoned with, and potentially the biggest win is that they didn't have to trade one of their young, controllable starting pitchers. As for the bullpen, Los Bomberos look to be heading into 2024 hotter than ever. Swing and a miss! Oh, topsy turvy! That's not some dude off the street, that's Jose Ramirez. Heading into the 2024 season, there are a few pitching staffs that stand out from the rest. And when looking at the bullpen specifically, you have the Houston Astros, the Atlanta Braves, and the bullpen that I'll be talking about today in the Seattle Mariners. From the numbers we'll look at, I'll say right now that the Mariners will have the most valuable bullpen in baseball, and they will also have the toughest three-headed monster at the back end of games that we'll see this year. Are you a fan of an opposing team that says otherwise? Feel free to comment below the link to your video explaining why your team will outperform the Mariners. The nine guys we'll be covering in this video are Austin Both, Trent Thornton, Carlos Vargas, Jackson Kowar, Taylor Saucedo, Gabe Spire, Gregory Santos, Matt Brash, and Andres Munoz. And as always, if you're a fan of this content, make sure to like and subscribe to The Couch GM to stay up to date on all things baseball. To start off, I have to mention that Levi Stout was just claimed by the Mariners off of waivers. He was a part of that trade with the Reds that sent Luis Castillo to Seattle, and he very well might have an impact for the Mariners out of the bullpen if they decide to move him to a long relief role for this year, but he may just be depth at starting pitching along with Emerson Hancock. The first guy on the previous list is Austin Both. He's a Seattle native who attended Kentwood High School, went on to play at the University of Washington before being drafted by the Nationals in the fifth round of the 2013 MLB Draft. Both signed a one-year contract with the Seattle Mariners in January 2024, and throughout his career up to this point has struggled to find the consistency. Over six seasons, he's had a 4.9 ERA, a 1.403 whip, but a respectable 8.5 strikeouts per nine and a 3.3 walks per nine. He'll likely be in a long relief role for the Mariners and pitching in games where they're not ahead. His arsenal is a four-seam fastball, a curveball, a sweeper, and a cutter. Next up, we have some Mariner on Mariner action. This is Trent Thornton versus Mitch Garver. Thornton was acquired from the Toronto Blue Jays at the trade deadline last year, and he proved to be a great pickup as in 26 innings pitched for the Mariners, he had a 2.08 ERA, a 1.077 whip, 7.3 strikeouts per nine, and a great 1.7 walks per nine. And his underlying baseball savant statistics backed up those results, as he would have been in the top percentiles in expected ERA, average exit velocity, walk percentage, barrel percentage, and hard hit percentage. Thornton's pitch arsenal is a sweeper, a four-seam fastball, sinker, curveball, and slider. Thornton will also likely be used in the middle innings and low leverage situations, but he's a solid guy to have in your bullpen. Next up is a guy who likely won't start on the big league roster, but he has the potential to be a difference maker. This is right-handed pitcher Carlos Vargas. Vargas was acquired along with catcher Sebi Zavala in the trade that sent Eugenio Suarez to the Diamondbacks. Vargas is heading into his age 24 season, and with six years of club control, he was a high upside grab for the M's. His fastball has been up to 101. His main secondary is this pitch that registers as a cutter. He also throws a sinker and is messed around with a changeup. And his profile at this stage is very similar to when the Mariners acquired Andres Munoz back in 2019. High velocity, high strikeout upside, but has struggled with command up to this point. Put him in the Mariners pitching lab this spring training in the first month in AAA, and Carlos Vargas likely will have an impact on this Mariners bullpen in 2024. And at that point, the Mariners will have four legit guys throwing 100 plus. Next up is Jackson Kowar. He's another guy similar to Carlos Vargas that the Mariners do not show on their bullpen depth chart, but I think will provide a big impact in 2024. He was also acquired this offseason in a trade. He was one of two pieces coming back from the Braves in the trade that sent Jared Kelnick, Marco Gonzalez, and Evan White to Atlanta. When looking at Kowar, it's best to just ignore those top line stats. Jackson was drafted by the Kansas City Royals in the first round of the 2018 draft out of the University of Florida, and Jackson was a starting pitcher up until the 2022 season in which the Royals shifted him to the bullpen. Since joining the bullpen, he's shown somewhere between a 9 to a 10 strikeouts per 9, 
but right now he's sitting at a 6.3 walks per nine. And his major league numbers as a whole up to this point over 74 innings pitched are a 9.12 ERA, a 2.095 whip, and although he seems to possess a solid pitch arsenal in a forcing fastball sitting at 97 miles an hour, a devastating changeup, and a slider, again his numbers have not been good and in 2023 he gave up a 364 batting average with a 455 slug on his changeup. But even with those numbers, although he didn't qualify with innings for baseball savant, he would have been in the red in average exit velocity, barrel percentage, and hard hit percentage. I mean, look at this changeup. It's given me vibes of a certain changeup from a reliever in Milwaukee. He's got the arsenal. It seems that all he needs is Mariners pitching coach Pete Woodward to show him the stats on getting ahead 0-1 instead of falling behind 1-0, throw your pitches in the zone because they're nasty, and this might be a guy that'll surprise you. Hometown kid Taylor Saucedo was a great pickup for the Mariners last offseason, as in 2023 for the M's, he pitched in 47 and two thirds innings with a 3.59 ERA, a 1.343 whip, 8.1 strikeouts per nine, 4.3 walks per nine. His arsenal is mainly a sinker, a slider, changeup, and curveball, and with his unique arm slot and ability to hide the ball, he succeeded at limiting hard contact. He was in the 94th percentile in average exit velocity, 90th percentile in chase rate, 75th percentile in whiff percentage, also in the upper tiers of barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and ground ball percentage. Most of his outings last year were in low leverage situations, but he can be used as a lefty specialist if needed. Then we have Gabe Spire. When the Mariners acquired Gabe last offseason, he had just 40 innings pitched for the Royals over four seasons, and he was an absolute gem in Seattle in 2023. He pitched in 54 and two thirds innings with a 3.79 ERA, a 1.061 whip, 10.5 strikeouts per nine, and an awesome 1.8 walks per nine. The average baseball fan might not even know who Gabe Spire is, but he was absolutely elite. No one in baseball caused hitters to chase more out of the zone than Gabe Spire. He also was up there in strikeout percentage, walk percentage, and ground ball percentage. And there was no other pitcher in all of baseball in the 90th percentile or higher for walk percentage, ground ball percentage, and chase percentage. Gabe Spire was on the mound 19 times where there was two outs with runners in scoring position. He allowed a 0.59 batting average, a 158 on base percentage, and he allowed just one hit all last year in that situation. He's gonna be the high leverage lefty for this year. And his pitch arsenal is a sinker, a slider, a four seam, and a changeup. As you can see with that changeup, he hardly threw it and he couldn't command it. It's been confirmed this offseason that he's been working on his split change. Then we get to the three headed monster mentioned at the beginning of this video. Gregory Santos was acquired this offseason from the Chicago White Sox in exchange for Prelander Baroa, Zach DeLoach, and a comp P draft pick for 2024. Santos is not yet a household name, but he has the stuff of a back end closer. Getting up to 103 on the gun, in 2023 he pitched in 66 and a third innings for the White Sox with a 3.39 ERA, a 1.296 whip, 9 strikeouts per 9, and 2.3 walks per 9. He threw his slider 52% of the time, his sinker 43% of the time, and also has a four seam and a changeup. In his first full season in the major leagues, he excelled in basically every area. His slider was in the 98th percentile in breaking run value. He was in top percentiles in expected ERA, fastball velocity, chase percentage, walk percentage, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and ground ball percentage. And Gregory Santos is another guy in the 100th percentile in a category. No one in baseball had a lower barrel percentage allowed, as Santos allowed just a 1.5% barrel rate. With the Mariners losing out on Justin Topa in that Jorge Polanco trade, Santos seems to be the guy to slot into that type of role. And after all, him and Topa seem to be similar pitchers, specifically with their high ground ball percentage and their usage of the sinker. He is under team control for the next five years, so this trio at the back of the bullpen and Santos, Brash, and Munoz will be around for the foreseeable future. Next up, of course, is Matt Brash. Since making the change from starting pitcher to relief pitcher in 2022, he's been one of the filthiest guys in all of the league. In 2023, he pitched in 78 games, 70 and two thirds innings, with a 3.06 ERA, a 1.33 whip, 13.6 strikeouts per nine, and a 3.7 walks per nine. 
And you might have figured his baseball savant page looked something like this. His slider was in the 96th percentile in breaking run value, and he was elite in most categories aside from walks. Brash in 2023 threw his slider 50% of the time, his four seam 33% of the time, and he also has a knuckle curve, a cutter, a sinker, and a changeup that he can use at any point. If he can take that next step in commanding his pitches with three ball counts, he might be one of the toughest at-bats in baseball. Then finishing it off with Senor Smoke, Andres Munoz. Munoz spent some time on the IL in 2023 and had some ups and downs, but again, when he's locked in and healthy, there might not be a tougher at-bat in baseball. In 2023, he pitched in 49 innings, had a 2.94 ERA, a 1.265 whip, a 12.3 strikeouts per nine, and four walks per nine. He evenly disperses his pitches between breaking ball and fastball, with his slider being thrown about 48% of the time, with his two variations of his fastball and his four seam and sinker coming in at about 52% of the time. And when you force hitters to guess between a 100 mile an hour fastball or an 88 mile an hour slider, you're going to get solid results as he had a fantastic expected ERA, expected batting average, chase percentage, whiff percentage in the 99th percentile, strikeout percentage, barrel percentage, and he was in the 96th percentile in ground ball percentage in 2023. Munoz has been used by Scott Service against the heart of the lineup no matter which inning that comes in, whether it's the 7th, 8th, or 9th, and he'll likely face the best hitters again this coming year. This Mariners bullpen, no matter who's coming through that door in the left field wall, is going to be special in 2024 and likely will be the best bullpen in all of baseball. So be on the lookout for those sirens and flashing lights in T-Mobile Park this year and let me know your thoughts in the comments below on who will be the most valuable relief pitcher for the Mariners. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.